Hey Amen. Please have your seat. Welcome to church. Good to see you back at the Sunday service. I will speak about two things. And, um, okay. Quickly, I will speak about one thing that the Holy Ghost dropped into my heart. I've been doing a research in my spirit. And, um, praise God. That's the thing I know, but I'm doing that thing. I'll be looking at something very brief before we go into today's teaching. I want to be very brief and I'm trusting my God will help me to be very, very brief about it. Um, let me start by saying we all know David and we all know how David was, how David was to God. The Bible says God testified that David was a man after his own heart. Some call him the apple of God's eyes. Some call him many things. And rightly so, David was all that and much more. Amen. But one day David sinned by taking another man's wife and killed the husband by his authority. And God reacted in heaven. The Bible says David, there we go. And um, how many of you know that God forgiven? Okay, you all know that God forgiven. That is now the beginning of my question. What is forgiveness in the Old Testament? Because if God forgave him, that means the sin should be wiped out. Is that not it? But God told him that though the sin is forgiven, but there will be punishment. Anybody following me? Punishment. So God punished him. Then David was shouting, Oh God, you need your right spirit within me. Take me not there from your presence. Psalm 18, I was, I'm sorry, 29. All of those stuff. Is it 29? No. I forget Sam, what is this? But in Psalm 52, I think I said that something. In Psalm 52, it says, Blessed is the man who God does not impute his sin unto him. Let me break it down. David begged God, and God says, I'm going to punish you for the sin. Amen. Now, in Psalm 52, David says, Blessed is the man who God does not impute sin unto him. That Psalm explains forgiveness as though you have never committed sin. God, take it out. Say God does not impute it. And when God was giving David the parting shot, he didn't mention, he says, if your children offend me, I will punish them, but I will not take away my mercy, nor take them away from the throne of Israel. Who know that? So, the last words from Psalm 52 to the last days of David shows to me that God forgive David, and David has no consciousness that God will do anything again. Because sin unforgiven or sin punished is what is called cause. Anybody hear me? I'm just really thinking in my spirit. But God did not put it on, on, on Solomon when he got to Rehoboam. The Bible said the kingdom was divided. But it was not his foolishness that divided the kingdom. It was what happened before. Should we go to attention today? Because the way we are looking. That's not really showing you understand what I'm saying. When God told Rehoboam, and Jehoboam divided the kingdom to 11 1, and it says Judah returned back to 1, is Jerusalem, I mean, Israel returned back to 1, like David was before he had the Holy Spirit. Now, that event is not because Abraham was only foolish, it's because David sinned. One of the sins that David sang, I mean, sin, was the reason why that issue came up. Then, Psalm 52, all the way to what God says, what happened to it? When God says, Blessed is the man who God does not impute sin unto him, and God does not count his iniquity against him. And David felt he has prayed, God has forgiven him. But I can tell you that for every sin forgiven in the Old Testament, somebody must bear it. And in the New Testament also, it's the same thing. No God forgives sins, but somebody must pay for it. Mm. That is why, and I understand better, when the Bible says, see, Rehoboam paid for the sin of his father. It's not just because he's a foolish child. Of course, he's a foolish child. That actually stays with him forever. But beyond that is that he was foolish, not because how can somebody so wise like Solomon Get back to somebody so foolish as the Abraham. Why? I want to show you something. The power of sin. The sin that the father committed, the grandfather, was so strong that from Solomon the wise man came out Abraham the foolish guy because somebody sinned. Even if you are given back to by Solomon, that should be enough wisdom. Even if it's by inheritance. At least those might have to bring it. This guy took nothing from Solomon than the truth. And was able to bring to pass the things that God says will happen to the house. And I understand why the Bible says Jesus did not only die for our sin, he born our iniquity. I, I've been reading that for a long time. 
without understanding it deeply as I do now. And it to itself. Jesus is not only Jesus was the one that born that he born the iniquity. Simply means that God must punish somebody for the sin that you and I committed. God must put it if, apart from forgiving us. Somebody must bear the brunt of it. Who's your name? Come. I want to show you something. Give me a power tonight. The power that God gave me when I was coming to the service today. When I was studying. Isaiah said, see what redemption is. It will heal your sickness, but it also bore your iniquity. Not just dealing with your disease only. It also bore the iniquity. Chastisement of your peace is upon him. He was saying all those things by his stripes you are healed. Every packet of salvation. He then said that packet of redemption, simply like God must punish somebody for the sin you committed. So, even when you commit sin now, and say, God forgive me, God forgive you, but the punishment must go somewhere. And I said, Christ, I said, okay, I, I'm going to be standing for this guy, that if I sin, this guy will stand for me. So I sin, I said, God forgive me, God said, forgive me. But God will not transfer, like credit, the punishment to Jesus. He said, he born our iniquity. You know why? The, the chastisement of our peace is upon him. Simply means that, what happened to real Abraham should not happen to you. Maybe I should stop. What happened to real Abraham is not permitted to happen to you. Why? For David, real Abraham was the one that born the iniquity. But for me, it was Jesus. So I can't transfer my iniquity to this guy. Can you see how your parents deceive us? When I, when I said Jesus is the one bearing my iniquity, I have seen, I went to God, God forgive me. Jesus was transferred. The parents said, see what he did. Though. This is the punishment. Jesus now took it and said, I paid it now, and me now. I died in a dim lad, a combination now, a combination, let's say, a promise you, a dim is okay, a disgrace me, or no tea, or for long, or forsake me, or be let, or by ye, and I'm alone, or by when you don't swim me down, and I put one salo, I want a low one, which you need, I want my own way, I want to disappear, but you don't want to see me. Who understand that? Just when I lay those things and say, from all that happened to me, pick the punishment for you want to pay for him. From all I've listed that now, say, pick your punishment. It will value or I'll pay for all. So when I commit sin and God forgive me, it's not possible for this girl, for example, to bear the iniquity of my sin. Why? For Old Testament, a man has to bear it. In New Testament, a God has to bear it. So New Testament Christians should not be cost driven. That's what Holy Ghost was doing to me. I was in the Bible on my own. The Holy Ghost just stopped me and said, David sinned. I said, I agreed. And he begged God for forgiveness. I said, I saw it. Did God forgive him? Yes. God said, if you won't pray, I forgive you. But God said, I will punish you. And we all know the punishment. All those children. But David now said, blessed is the man who God does not impute his sin unto him. Look at him. And who stands there? He's forgiven him. So God, God does not remember it again. So how did God not punish that what he did not remember? For example, if you offend me, and I said I'm going to punish her, and I told you, told you, told you, you say, am I not? Nobody am I not? But along the way, Mumbai, be, will I be down again? So, so, because of so many events that happened, I could not remember for like six months. Then, six months after, and I said, ah, that you remember that you did this thing. I said, ah, it's true. It's true. I can't beat her that time again. That sin is gone. The pressure doesn't work. It's gone. Then we said, that's how it happened. When they forget, everybody forget. But how can God forget sin and the problem is still paying for it? And I said, this is how it works. So somebody must bear the iniquity, even if God forgive you. In the Testament, somebody must pay for it. And it's like there is no forgiving sin in the Testament, Old Testament, without somebody paying penalty for it. God forgive Israel when Achan, Achan went to dip his hands into some strange things. God still kill Achan. But he has forgiven Israel. Every time God forgive them, it took somebody for punishment. New Testament now. And then I said, that system will change you. And that's the system that produced cause. So you can't be a New Testament Christian and still be under the burden of course. You understand me? And I explain to you because I want to rush that in New Testament, that is why Jesus born our iniquity. Because somebody must still be punished for it. And, and let me not say it in two ways. One, that gives you leverage over courses. Because I can't, you can't claim to have the punishment of your parents' sin. Don't claim it. It's not yours. You only claim it because you don't understand what Jesus has done. We can attack that system that what Jesus has done. And when the cause seems to be apparent, you can tell him Jesus born it. You, you, can't, you can't lay hold on me. Sorry. Why? When my father sinned, I'm not the one to bear it. That is in the Old Testament before Jesus comes. The sin you forgive them for, Jesus bear it. The sin I forgive, I commit, or I repented for on their behalf, Jesus also has to bear it. 
So I, I can't transfer anything called sin to my children. I can only transfer the blessing. Also, the part of it that when you commit sin and you're saying, God, forgive me, please understand somebody is paying for it. Imagine what every sin is doing to Jesus. Full stop. I don't want to go further. Bracket, full stop. Let's look at understanding temple position. That one was my thought. My study this afternoon. The Holy Ghost was sharing with me the power over causes. And he's telling me, son, if I burn it, you can't bear it. So your, what I bear is not transferable. God can't transfer his punishment they bear to men. Men can only transfer their punishment to God. Who understand that? So don't let anything ask you that you are under one cause of one man who didn't believe. You have a question? I sit down. When will we get to you? Because sometimes we sort it. Okay? So you can't hold me down to any cause. By Isaiah's revelation, I can break it. And that will help me to start my teaching today about where we stop on Sunday. Time is already against us, so permit me to be running on a very high speed. God grant you understanding.